The House may not be sitting this week, but the Hill will be the epicenter of political drama, as all eyes will be on this week's much-anticipated testimony from Katie Telford, the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff. Telford is expected to testify for at least two hours this Friday before the Procedure and House Affairs Committee on Foreign Election Interference. This came after weeks of resistance from the Liberals and opposition outcry. Even the NDP threatened to side with the Conservatives on the issue. But this won't be Katie Telford's first time testifying before a committee. In the summer of 2020, Telford testified a House Finance Committee over the government's cancelled WE Charity contract to administer $900 million federal student grant program. Then in May of 2021, Telford testified on military misconduct. The House Defense Committee was studying sexual misconduct allegations against General Jonathan Vance, the former chief of the defense staff. And a reminder, it wasn't a committee, but Telford was also key witness at last year's Emergencies Act inquiry hearings. So what can we expect from Telford's foreign election interference testimony? Let's bring in former top political advisors for some analysis. David McLaughlin is the former chief of staff to Prime Minister Brian Mulroney. He's now the president and CEO of the Institute on Governance. And David Hurley was the campaign co-chair for the Liberals under Paul Martin. He is now a partner with the Gandalf Group and host of The Curse of Politics and the Hurley Burley Podcasts. Welcome both, Davids. Thanks uh, for taking the time uh, to talk to us. Uh, David Hurley, I want to start with you. There will be a lot that Katie Telford won't be able to say. This is classified information, or a lot of it is. What, then, are you expecting to hear? Well, you know, um, there was a time when uh, former Liberal leader and Prime Minister John Turner called... Uh, uh, question period bullshit theater but that is uh, particularly <laughs> uniquely suited to uh, parliamentary committees I, I don't expect to hear anything of note or interest Ms. Telford is a highly intelligent highly skilled debater who knows exactly what the parameters are and what she can and cannot say and she will not be revealing anything that the government doesn't intend to reveal until the public inquiry happens or the special rapporteur reports. But similarly, the opposition parties are not interested in learning more about Chinese interference or what the government has done. They're interested in scoring political points. And so they're calling the prime minister's chief of staff, which is an unorthodox, but as you point out, not unheard of thing to do in our system. And I, I expect it to be a bunch of clumsy political jabs lobbed by the opposition that are allegations, not questions, and a calm Katie Telford rough batting them away. Well, I'm uh, expecting to have to apologize for the prior <laughs> comment there tomorrow, but um, David McLaughlin, so she has testified again. She's, she was in the hot mm -hmm. seat. She has one of the highest uh, sort of stress jobs in politics. Mm -hmm. um, what are you expecting? Are you expecting the opposition, as David Hurley just said, just want to score political points, we're not going to find anything out. This is going to be theater. Yeah, I think this is mostly going to be theater, but it's a necessary theater to get us to really what is the main game, which and the main question before the government and Canadians is, and that's whether or not we have a public inquiry, an independent public inquiry on this uh, on this issue. I think people will find the whole uh, episode on Friday to be vaguely uh, dissatisfying, uh, kind of uh, not very uh, informative, uh, because of what in part uh, David Hurley uh, mentioned the, the dynamics that are that are taking place. Ms. Telford is really not at liberty to provide much in the way of additional information. I mean, it's classified, it's secure information. She's not allowed to say, it's, uh, you know, just offer up a whole bunch of new intelligence or something. So in terms of new information or new understanding of what was going on, you won't be able to see that from Ms. Telford. And therefore, that puts her in this rather invidious position of having to almost, almost plead the uh, the Fifth Amendment sort of equivalent yeah, in so parliamentary I terms. That. That I, I, I cannot say that. I'm, you know, 
know, on the advice of or something like that, you know, I'm not able to offer anything more. And so, uh, you know, it, it, she'll have to watch how she does that. So it is a bit of, uh, of performance theatre, which Parliament is very good at uh, these days, but I don't think it'll really get us uh, any further along to the bottom of the, of the issue. We fundamentally need an independent public inquiry for that to happen. So, David Hurley, I mean, what I'm curious about is the Liberals First of all, Joyce, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I really thought you could quote a prime minister on the show. I, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> you can indeed quote a prime minister. <laughs> Even John Turner, definitely. You know, we can't really disagree with him <laughs> on uh, a lot of these. Uh, a lot of these committees. It sounds a lot like that kind of theater. Um, yeah. But okay. But I want to ask you this. Um, you know, the, the Liberals fought so hard not to have her testify. There was filibuster at the, filibustering at the committee. And then they changed their mind. Then they said, okay, whatever, let her testify. So I'm asking you about that strategy to fight so hard to the point where the Conservatives were saying in the House and outside of the House, what are they hiding? It must be bad. It must be so bad. So what kind of a strategy was that to have her now say, okay, she'll come and testify? Uh, very poor. Um, the, the, the government's handling of this issue from a communications point of view has been abysmal. Um, they uh, likely have nothing to hide here, but they sure look like they do, and they've constructed this. They, they have step by step constructed a scenario where it looks like they have something to hide. You know, I mean, there are there, there is a point of principle at which you could say that chiefs of staff shouldn't testify, but they'd already acceded to that twice before, and nobody these days cares about those norms or conventions in our political process anymore anyway. So, you know, if they were ever going to end up letting her testify, you're 100% right, Joyce. Why did they spend a couple of weeks uh, preventing it from happening and therefore creating the impression that there was something to hide? Because you know, I'm sure there isn't. And I'm sure, to David's point, we're headed toward a public inquiry. I mean, when Mr. Johnson's appointment did not satisfy the entire country that he was going to be the kind of independent arbiter, mm -hmm. I thought it would became immediately obvious that Mr. Johnson is going to have to recommend a public inquiry. I see no way in which Mr. Johnson has the moral authority in the country not to recommend a public inquiry yeah. into this. So I assume that's where we're headed, and that's where the real information will come out. But again, it will come out behind closed doors and not in a public environment. And in my, in my, my real question about all of this is, is anybody persuaded by anything anymore? Is there somebody that can come down with a ruling or a finding? And most people would accept that to be true. I'm not sure that we have that. Well, we don't have it so far, that's for sure. Um, to, to, to your mm -hmm. point, uh, David Hurley, we don't have that. But David Hurley made a point about, you know, the difference between hired people that mm -hmm. go and testify before these committees, so chiefs of staff, mm -hmm. communications mm -hmm. directors, and elected okay. officials. So now it's become very clear that more and more they're asking for staffs mm -hmm. for, 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 you know, so, so is there... Any benefit in having senior staff testify at these at these committees? Well, there's benefit politically for the opposition, uh, but there's no benefit to the government to having political staff uh, uh, testify uh, at uh, you know in, in Tell parliament. Us why? Well, uh, let's go back to the norms and principles that, that David uh, says are, are, at, are at issue here in decline, and he's not wrong. Uh, but if you look at the, at the Trudeau government's 2015, when they took power, they, had a, they put out a nice long statement about open government, and they talked about how they would operate and, as, a, as a new government. And they set out very clearly the rules of engagement with Parliament, ministerial accountability, etc. There is nothing there that talks about the, the role of exempt staff, as they're called, exempt political staff, to be accountable to testify before Parliament. So so, you know, and there really isn't. There, it isn't in our Canadian system of governance, in our Westminster system, our system of responsible government. Who's accountable? The minister. So on political questions, on strat strategic questions, it is a minister that is responsible and is accountable and therefore answerable to Parliament. Katie Telford fundamentally is only accountable and only answerable to one person. That's the Prime Minister. So, David Hurley, what's interesting is when whoever's in power is against having staff testify because back when Nigel Wright 
was the chief of staff of Prime Minister Stephen Harper. They did not want him to testify before a committee. Mm. The Liberals wanted him to testify. And now the shoe is in the other foot. So it seems that whoever's in power wants to protect their staff or doesn't want their staff to, to testify. Should there be a rule on this? Well, as David said, there, there is a rule. And the question is whether or not we should change the rule. The rule is that they don't testify. The rule is that ministers are accountable. It's impossible to, to, to extend David's thinking. It's impossible to have a situation where you would say, well, Katie Telford uh, is to blame and should be fired, but Trudeau is fine. Like, that's not impossible. There's nothing that happened in that office that Trudeau didn't approve. And our system ha holds ministers accountable for that. Now, having said that, it doesn't really anymore because ministers don't hold themselves accountable to that. Ministers don't go to committees and subject themselves to grilling uh, on some of these things. Ministers don't resign when things go badly in their departments or in their areas. So the, the, the notion of ministerial accountability has been uh, diluted so badly that I don't think Canadians really understand or accept the why exempt staff shouldn't actually be coming and testifying because somebody ought to surely come be coming and telling us what is going on. So I think, you know, the, the, the sensible thing would be to return to an era of ministerial accountability rather than starting to hold unelected advisors accountable for decisions that fundamentally their employers made. And you could even add to that because the idea of a, as a political staffer, you come in for a, a little bit of time, you're, you're typically younger, you're thrown into these kind of jobs, very interesting jobs, very demanding, uh, and then all of a sudden there's a risk of you being called to a, a parliamentary committee for something that your employer did, you know, minister, that may you may or may not have, have been part of or agreed to or something. It puts them in a very difficult position. The reality is that uh, we, uh, David is right, we really have to get back at a situation where we go to the fundamentals. The fundamentals is under our system of government is that ministers are accountable and ministers are responsible. Well, but we, but if the fact is, is uh, if they are not, you know, uh, owning up to that fact, we're seeing this general, you know, uh, kind of uh, erosion or corrosion of the of of the of ministerial, of the ministerial accountability yeah. and responsibility. Yeah. So this is an inevitable result. And, uh, you know, unless that sort of changes, we're going to have more and more of these kinds of demands. Well, that would be interesting. Interesting to see what will happen on Friday, and I'm sure we'll have you guys back on. Why not? To see if we were right about Happy this. Happy to do it. Uh, David Hurley, yeah. uh, David McLaughlin, thanks so much for this for today. Pleasure. And later this 